Hello everyone, we're back again. Let us continue to the next part. We are going to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. <clears throat> oh. Yay! Oh god! <coughs> Should I say it's nice to meet you? This is the first time we've met in real life. Before, we only met in dreams, consciousness, but when I was in someone else's body. Thank you so much for coming to rescue me, but I also need to apologize. During this time, I did some self-reflection. My sense of inferiority and yielding to the academia led to all of this and created so much trouble for you all. That's not your fault, though. Exactly! <clears throat> We're here because you're a good Archon and one of our friends! <laughs> Thanks, you two. Amazing. So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. It's like I just had an endlessly long dream. I can't even tell if I just woke up or was only now born into this world. My concept of self has become so clear. <clears throat> but now doesn't seem to be the time to indulge in this feeling. Um, this is really embarrassing. You all just rescued an Archon, and now she needs your help to save her country. And even the entire world. It's okay. With you here, Paimon's sure that everything will work out. There's one more thing. What is it? For all the things the Academia did to me, and for all the folly it committed in the name of wisdom, as their Archon, I will make them pay. Alright. Academia is with their god creation plan. We need to hurry and prevent the birth of that false god. I need to make some preparations. Since I'm now free, I can establish a direct link to the Akasha and control it. First things first, I need to remove the restrictions that the doctor put on me in the Akasha. After that, I'll make some adjustments and revoke the sage's permissions. The Akasha will then be like how it originally was. Only operable by the Archon. After all, the Academia betrayed Greater Lord Ruka Devata's trust. This might take some time. In the meantime, you should also work on your own preparations. If we don't stop the God Creation plan in time, we'll be in for a tough fight. <coughs> Super excited. <coughs> Excuse me, goddamn. Oh, I know where to go. Oh, well, I went too far. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, there's a chest right here. Hello. A reward on the road. you find the time to walk around did you manage to rescue lesser lord kusanali yes we did bro we did <coughs> He's in the right now. that's great <laughs> just now dear went to find asfa the senior consultant of the court of 30 and explained everything to him in response asfa said why didn't you tell me earlier if it was to rescue the dendro archon we would have helped as well <laughs> I didn't know we could have even counted the city guards of the Corps of 30 among our potential reinforcements. <laughs> it looks like we were a bit too conservative with our plan. <clears throat> oh, already? Damn. I wanna... Hold on. <clears throat> I want to find Dia. Nope, that's not where I wanted to go again. Oh, hey, that's a chest. Is this an answer from this world? Maybe it is. <clears throat> No? Ugh, this is taking too long. You know what? Let's just... Let, let's just... <clears throat> let's just go back. Nahida, what's up? How's it going, Nahida? I'm done with the parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Greater Lord Rukadavata's design is truly brilliant. Oh, also, this is for you. <gasps> what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's so cute! What the fuck? device I put together just now. <clears throat> you can think of it as an upgraded Akasha terminal. We may not need it right now, but it should be helpful <clears throat> in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! We're both small things that float! Oh, all the things that make Paimon special got copied! When Paimon appears with the Traveler room now on, people won't remember Paimon because she isn't unique anymore! Yeah, but it doesn't look like you, though. That's the thing, Paimon. It doesn't even talk. Unlike you, you actually talk. <laughs> it's alright, Paimon. It can't replace you. It's only a flying device, but you're the Traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> you're so good at comforting people, Nahida. If only the Traveler was as smart as you. <laughs> <laughs> God, Paimon, shots fired. I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. 
I wasn't trying to comfort you. Nahida, you're a natural at this. What you just said made Paimon even happier. By the way, there's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm <coughs> not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However, I'm not as well loved as Greater Lord Rukadevata. If we get into a situation where combat is our only option, I'll have to count on you and I'll do my best to provide support. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm. So the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> I've located where the fault <clears throat> is. Time is of the essence, so <clears throat> let's skip to it. Yes, let's go. Ashish. <clears throat> Had to move my plate of food. Alright. It's very pretty here, honestly. Oh, this is it. Guys, this is it. <clears throat> um... Um, 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 should I actually really use this team, though? Oh, you know, you know what? The, he, he's Electro. Scar I mean, this is, we're gonna fight him. We're gonna fight Scaramouche. Like, that is, that is a, like, we know this right now, at this point. We're gonna fight him. <clears throat> um, so I should use someone that's gonna be helpful in this fight. Obviously, we're gonna keep Ether. Um... I don't know who to use. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's it. For justice. Yeah, here we go. Hmm, actually. I genuinely don't know. <clears throat> I want to use ether because... First time using ether, like, for, like, literally anything. I don't even know who... Yeah, screw it. We'll do this. <clears throat> what is this place? Is this really the way we need to go? Wow. Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right smack bang in the middle of the city? The sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The safest and most convenient way would be to build within the Academia itself. Hmm, that's true. They were already hiding one god, so why not two? Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. The sages really saw the god creation plan as their ultimate goal. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the Academia alone. The Fatuli under the Doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological support. Yeah, or else they wouldn't have been that generous. <clears throat> is that it, though? I've always felt that this doctor is different from the Academia Sages. He doesn't seem to share their sense of urgency. Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So, the doctor being weird is actually normal. So, this Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god is called the Balladeer? We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsessions. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. 
The other obsession is probably related to his past. But I can't quite explain it. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Shogun before he became a Vatui Harbinger. Yep. That's why he wants a Gnosis so badly. There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject. <clears throat> now with that temper and ego of his. It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. The more we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. Ah, I see. How fascinating. All right, time to go. Let's get through here and meet him in person. All right, here we go. <clears throat> hey, how's it going? <clears throat> yep, it is it for you. It looks like we can climb up these pipes. All right. <clears throat> oh. Hey there, bud. Yes, indeed. Oh, I did it. Okay. Right, cool. Huh? Mm. The cart is stuck. Maybe there's something wrong with the tracks. Let's try adjusting the direction of the device to clear the tracks. I thought maybe I could make it. <clears throat> well, 
It's, it sure is taking some time. Can I get it? Nope. <clears throat> no, I gotta wait for it to turn around now. Hello there. Almost there. Come on. Let's go. <clears throat> oh. Looks like a really over the top elevator. Here we go, we're going up. Looking at its operational status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion or already completed. Oh no. What should we do? Paimon can't imagine how hard it would be to fight against that Fatui Harbinger with a Gnosis. Are you nervous, Paimon? If you really want to know, of course Paimon's nervous. Aren't you too, Nahira? Nah. She yes, ain't. I am. <clears throat> this is probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, <clears throat> but curious as well. Curious? Curious about what? Curious about her fate. 
To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything we learn, and everything that happens to us is considered knowledge. And if it's a form of knowledge, then it can be understood. However, words of wisdom here is about that which has yet to occur. So it has always drawn my curiosity. So to me, fate is the ultimate knowledge. That's also why I love observing humans and all the things that happen to them. It all brings me great satisfaction. And now, at long last, I'm not just an observer anymore. I will personally experience my own fate with you by my side. <laughs> Isn't this such a wonderfully exciting thing? Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. Agreed. Okay, let's continue <clears> on. <throat> I can sense his aura from here. This is it, guys. Just right behind here. Oh. Cutscene time? Yes, cutscene time! Whoa! Ascended to divinity. I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. Ooh. on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But... I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. He wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, know your place. The strife engraved upon a gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it, all those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. 
This is where everything ends, Boor. The God of Wisdom. You should know that wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Come. <laughs> Come. Let's reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. <clears throat> All right. Oh God. Oh, what is that? Stabilize. At my command, you shall fall. Propagate. Scatter. That's great, brother. Happy to hear it. Gather. Insignificant past. Bro, he just stopped a hand at full force. Oh, he's got a lower half. Now he's not just a torso. Oh my god. Literally the coolest boss we've ever seen. Bring it on, bro. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I can't fight him like this? Oh my god. Wait, what is this? Do I tag it? I'm confused. What do I do? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting these then. I don't know what they do. I genuinely am at a loss right now. Do I wait for you to just deplete your energy or something? Do that dual sword though. Oh God. Nahida. This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? Oh shit! We just concluded the 168th loop. Did 
you know that in the effort to create you, the people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles? The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? <gasps> it was this little guy? You can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? <laughs> Come, traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <sighs> All that battle experience! It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Tricks won't save you. Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A fool. <laughs> oh man. That's a title. A thousand eons mine to dominate. Stabilize. I will have order. Burn to oblivion. Tremble. Solidify. Hey, man, relax. Nah, I'm good. I feel that, man. I I totally feel for you. Oh, that must be his one shot. Uh, uh, how do I get him? Uh, how would I get that? I don't know what to do about this. I 
I'm just gonna keep attacking you now. That was just really mindless fighting, but hey, we did it. <clears throat> humans. Filthy humans. Let's take that nurses back, shall we? No. Wait. Please. Anything but the nurses. That's mine. Don't even try. I'll never. I'll never go back. haven't yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Erminsoul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadavata. Huh? This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. Is it cutscene time now? <clears throat> Never mind. Huh. This sure seems very different from what Paima imagined. Shouldn't Ermansoul be in this realm of consciousness? Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata to be as polluted as this. Forbidden knowledge? It seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? Hmm, your inference seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshrit's self-sacrifice and Greater Lord Rukadavata nearly exhausting her power. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the Conria Cataclysm 500 years ago. But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time, with Ermansoul itself already in danger. So... If we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean in order to save us, Greater Lord Rukadavata? Yes. It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Ermansoul. <laughs> oh, do you feel sad, Nahida? I'm just uh, sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. Here is madness. Chaos and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions all the way up to her last breath? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. Yes, her words.
words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now, we have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet with our lucid consciousness. And then, we'll let Greater Lord Rukadabata tell us the truth in person. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis' protection, we must always keep a clear mind. Otherwise, we could go mad at any moment. <sighs> That's so scary. Don't worry, it should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> we are now in this place. <clears throat> All right, so we're just gonna stop right here because this one, uh, this is getting pretty long. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.